Meat Boy is back and we have a long anticipated recipe. I've actually been meaning to do this for over a year, I think even over two years now. And someone was asking me a couple weeks ago, so I was like, all right, it's finally time to do the sourdough pizza crust. We've done bread videos in the past. I even did an older sourdough pizza video on my Patreon, but it's just pretty time consuming. I did find a recipe that only took about an hour of grunt work and maybe two days prep total. So this is as simple as it gets for legitimate sourdough. Let me show you guys how to do it. Like any true sourdough, we only have three ingredients, flour, water, and salt with the sourdough starter, which is simply a mixture of equal parts flour and water fermented over about two weeks. What I did was I put 25 grams of flour with 25 grams of water in this jar every single day, progressively adding it. And what that does is the natural yeast and bacteria in the environment start fermenting this. And when you feed it with water and flour every day, it's giving the bacteria and yeast something to eat. And if you smell this, it smells like wine, like yeast. Yeast being what people are used to adding to bread. This is just a natural version of that and it gives it a lot more flavor and it's healthier for you. And depending on the type of flour you want to use will drastically dictate the flavor of the bread. Here I just have a simple all-purpose flour. And for those of you that don't know, all-purpose flour is made from hard red winter wheat. It's ground up, it's hulled, and you have left is just regular white flour. The most natural grain is einkorn, and this is organic sprouted einkorn flour whole grain. This stuff's really expensive. The white version of this actually tastes pretty good, but most people don't have access to this. So for the sake of this recipe, I'm just using regular flour, but there's so many different types of grains that can be used here. Of course, you want a high quality filtered mineral water. I mean, in the case of sourdough, you know, low quality water probably isn't going to kill the sourdough culture, but you know, if you use a low quality water with kefir, for instance, the bacteria in the grains would die and you don't want to be drinking low quality water. One of the most important things here. And I just have some of the salt from Frankie's syringe meat. Oh, land salt is the least polluted. So we have our bowl on a scale and we're going to weigh out all of the ingredients precisely. 375 grams of water, 100 grams of our sourdough starter, And we're going to add 10 grams of salt. Then you really want to stir this and incorporate the starter into the water really well. So then we add 500 grams of the flour. Now we want to mix this in. So this should be a bit sticky, you know, not crazy like all of it sticking to your hands, but just a little bit. Now that everything is mixed together, we have to let this rest for half an hour. Then over the course of a two hour period, we're going to stretch and fold this four times. So every half hour we stretch and fold. Then this rests at room temperature for 12 hours and we're gonna separate it into four pieces and throw it in the fridge for one to three days, depending on how much flavor you want to develop. All right, our first half hour has passed. So now we have to stretch and fold the dough. Very simple. I'm gonna scrape it off the side of the bowl Take it, pull it, stretch it, fold it over itself. Now you're supposed to do this like on the flat surface with both hands, but I don't want to make that much of a mess. So we'll just do this four times, once for each side. Or well, like the sides of a square, I'm treating this as four sides. And one more time. So we're building that elasticity in the dough so it has a nice chew when we bite the pizza. Pizza! So another half hour, this is just the second time we're gonna stretch and fold this, same exact thing. Just pull it off the side of the bowl, stretch it out, fold it over itself, stretch it out, fold it over itself, stretch it out, fold it over, and one last time. All right, so we'll do this two more times and then that's it. All right, in this case, third time is not the charm because we still have to do this again, but 
we're gonna scrape this away from the side of the bowl, stretch it, fold it over. All right, another half hour, then we'll let this rest overnight. Final half hour, we're just gonna do the same thing one last time. Just stretch the dough and fold it over itself four times. All right, so now I'm gonna cover this with a damp rag and it's gonna sit on the counter for 12 hours, in this case overnight. And then we just have to pop it in the fridge for a day or two, maybe three, depending on the level of flavor you want to develop in the dough. All right, it has been about 12 hours. Look, we have some bubbles in our dough, good sign of the yeast activity. So we're gonna divide it into four pieces and put it in the fridge. So this is just some parchment paper. Now, even though this is parchment paper and it prevents the sticking, I am gonna put a little bit of flour on the outside of this because it is very sticky. And wrap it up for another day. So we have our four portions of pizza dough and this is where you wanna put this in the fridge and let those flavors really develop. If they weren't in the fridge and it was outside and warm, the yeast would just eat up all the flour and it would become way too fermented. So by cooling it down, by slowing down the fermentation, we're able to develop really, really nuanced and nice flavors. And that can be done from a one to three day period of time. I think we're gonna do around one and a half days. So it's been a day and we're gonna take our dough out to make the pizza. So you need to do this an hour before you plan on cooking because the oven has to be set to the max. So in my case, 550 degrees, and we're gonna let this get as hot as possible, which might take 10, 15 minutes, but then we want the actual oven to really, really, really warm up, which is gonna take over 45 minutes. And you guys that might be real big foodies have probably seen other YouTube chefs use a pizza steel which gets really hot in the oven so that the underside of the pizza gets cooked. I don't have a pizza steel. I don't expect you guys to buy one. This is just uh, what I had lying around. You could also use a regular sheet pan, put it upside down in the top rack of the oven. This is gonna be the surface for cooking the pizza. So the first reason is so the oven heats up. The second reason is we do want this dough to sit at room temperature for an hour. Now here I have another sheet pan with a layer of parchment paper. And what we're actually gonna do is slide this off onto the tray in the oven when we're ready to make it. So I'm just gonna gently spread this with my hands. And this is very easy. It gets substantially more difficult when the dough is a larger size. But I'm just pushing out towards the middle, kind of getting a little bit of a crust on the edges. You can kind of see the edges a bit higher. And this is basically see-through in the center. Very, very thin. So we have an hour before we put any of these toppings on. You know, we obviously don't want them just soaking through. For the very basic, simple, classic pizza, I'm using some organic mozzarella cheese from Whole Foods because we don't have it on Frankie's Sea Range Meat. But we do have Parmigiano Reggiano, and this is what makes a huge difference in the quality of the pizza. Uh, for the tomato sauce, I'm just using an organic jarred imported one from Italy. This is usually enough. You don't have to make your own special sauce. We just want something that's organic so we remove chemical concerns and in glass jars to remove any potential pollutant issues with the lining of the can. Oregano is very, very classic in pizza. And to me, that's all you really need. I don't have any olive oil left. I actually used it uh, for all the deviled eggs. Uh, that's the only thing I would put here, but it's still going to be delicious just with tomato, mozzarella, parmigiano, and oregano. For myself, I just made a little topping of the foods I've been eating lately, which is mushroom, onion, some ground beef. I put oregano in here, some beef jus, nice caramelized topping. Uh, I had some earlier, it was pretty tasty, and this is gonna go on the second pizza for myself. All right, oven is super hot and ready to go, so we're gonna put our toppings on. So there's our tomato sauce, and we have the mozzarella cheese. We should have our Parmigiano on there, as you guys could see by the rind. This is the good stuff. I keep thinking of that show, One Bite Pizza, and there's one episode where the guy's like, give me the real fucking guinea shit. <laughs> give me the real fucking guinea shit. <laughs> Turn that off for a second. Secrets, I'm gonna trade give secrets. you a line. Yeah. Huh? When the real Italians come in here, I'm gonna teach you how to say it so you feel it. 
you walk in, you see the stuff that I'm making. This is the real fucking Guinea shit given to me. I can say that? Yeah. I'm a Jewish guy. I'm, I this, can still say it? You, no. This is the real Guinea shit. Given him. This is the real fucking Guinea shit. This is the real fucking Guinea shit. Given me. That's how you say it. All right. I'm doing that from that right now. This is the real fucking Guinea shit. Give it to me. Done. I'm doing that from fucking now on. Although the guy was using Pecorino Romano, which we do have on Frankie's free range meat, and a combination of both is great. So now, some oregano, which is to me the most classic pizza spice. Just a tiny bit. All right. So now, this is the easiest way I've done it in a residential kitchen. So. You just slide it off. Then I push the steel back. And as you guys could see, it's still nice and perfect in there. So we'll let this go maybe 10 minutes. You know, actual legitimate pizza oven, which goes to like 800, 900, 1,000 degrees. It's only three or four minutes. I mean, that looks delicious. We got bubbles all over the place, nice and crispy. And you could go a little longer, but you don't have a real pizza oven. You don't have a steel, so the only thing you could really do better than this is cook the underside more, which is a little difficult. Now, if you want to do another pizza, you would let this heat up another 15, 20 minutes, but you know, since it's just for me, I'll throw it on there. So I just slid that onto the cool sheet tray, and uh, hopefully my sister gets home soon and we'll be able to taste this. So the only thing I would have done differently was you should rest the pizza on an oven rack because the bottom kind of steamed stuff. Gina, let's calm down and eat the pizza. Okay, no. I'm going to have two slices because well, might as well. Hopefully that food, this is... Mmm. You know, it's you want to try some on camera? You could try some off camera and talk. Mmm. May I? Mother's Day, I said Ladies who's single. By the way, happy Mother's Day to all those mamas out there. Mm. Thank you for this beautiful gift. Not only the triplets, but Abits. Mm. Oh my God, it's awesome. Mm. Thank you all. It's delish. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. Let me know how you like this recipe. Definitely try out a pizza steel or something to, to really get that bottom cooked. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, if you guys could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Mm -hmm. You can check out frank if you'd like to support me further. Mm. I have a good picture.